the 2022 season, NFL season came to an end a few weeks ago. We already talked about it. Super Bowl 57, 38, 35, amazing for 58 minutes. And the last two minutes were a dud. But the season ended with a Chiefs Super Bowl victory. And what a year we had. So from DeMar Hamlin, from quarterbacks moving all over the place, from new stars being made to all stars leaving, so much took place. And as the NFL season begins their new fiscal year officially tomorrow, let's put a bow on this first season we covered 100% together. So we have our normal crew in Brian, Alex, and Alex, Alex Young, Alex Renelio. And then we have a new kid on the block joining us in the long term. Hayden Naller is here. What's up, Hayden? Glad to have you. What's up? Glad to be back. Glad to be back. It's uh, really been a pleasure doing the show. All right. And we're great here. And don't forget to check out Hayden on his own podcast, the Settle the Score podcast, released on Fridays on Spotify. And he had an awesome show on the March Madness and quarterback situation this past week. So we will expand on that. Plus, talking about all the other good things that happened in the NFL this year. But first things first. Before we talk all things NFL, for the first time, we really hit some major exposure with closing in on over 40,000 comments and 800, sorry, 40,000 real views, about 800 comments in total. Our Super Bowl predictions with originally Brian and the two Alexes and myself resulted in... How do I say this nicely? Some warfare in the comments. So we all predicted the Philadelphia Eagles would win the Super Bowl. And we were all were off. And very off. The closest was Alex in the score prediction. But uh, we okay. really got some feedback on a lot of yeah. Chief fans and a lot of people just trolling just because for the first time. For the first time I saw comments that people did not like the predictions. Some people asked the show to be canceled. Some people ask us to stick to our J jobs. Some people told us to give up on this dream. And some people came at our character for whatever reason. But it was good to go through that experience, I think, because this is what we signed up for. This is what we're going for. And this isn't going to be the first time this happens. And um, this, I will say there were some comments that were fair, I will say. And one thing I should have considered, at least in my predictions, and I'll speak with the others, was the over was 50 and a half in most books. But I mean, nationally, it was just about that. And all of us picked under predictions. And, uh, <clears throat> well, again, you know, it is what it is. What could I tell you? Every single person who does this, whether you're us starting out or you're a veteran like Stephen A. Smith or a legend or Mike and the Mad Dog or anyone legendary in this business, you know, predictions go um, either they work or they don't work. And at least with my prediction, you know, Super Bowls lately have been low scoring. The Eagles were nationally favorited, were national favorites at minus one and a half. And um, yeah, it just didn't work out. And, you know, I have people reminding me of that and saying other things. And uh, that's the one thing I will take. I could should have considered maybe the score a little more. But, I mean, the big thing, not a lot of – a lot of us didn't see Patrick Mahomes um, – with his alleged ankle injury, we didn't see him pulling it off with this defense that was compared to some of the greatest defenses of all time. And then they didn't even get one sack in the game. It just, for this script, people say that it is, it didn't go according to it. So I thank all the comments and they're going to continue because you people keep sharing it. And thank you for that. Even if you don't like what we said, but I'll leave it to the other guys who were called out for their picks and um, I want to leave it to the floor first with the two axes and Brian. How do you feel for the first time getting real major exposure on one video? And even if your take wasn't the correct one or prediction. Yeah. So, you know, I'm going to say that I got probably a lot of hate because I said that uh, the Eagles were going to blow out the Chiefs. And, you know, it's a Super Bowl. There's only two teams. That's football. There's only two teams playing each other. It's a 50 50 chance, right? That you pick which team is going to be right or wrong. And then there's a 50 it is a 50 50 chance if you're going to pick it as, you know, high scoring or low scoring. So I went with the quarter of the Eagles in a high scoring game in a blowout. OK, and it didn't happen. How many times in history has it happened where people have had a wrong take, not just in sports, but in anything in life? So really, the noise is noise. And that's OK. 
I'll stick to my opinions and my beliefs when the defense was at the time based on the wins and how they played this season at a record setting pace. And, you know, it is Pat Mahomes. He is the wild, wild card kind of guy in the sense that he just makes magic happen, right? But if you look at the Eagles on the offensive side, Jalen Hurts played a fantastic game and basically almost won the game for his team, willed himself, right? If they had more time on the clock, we might be celebrating an Eagles win. You know, yeah, that was wasn't not... pointed out. I think most of us picked, well, you picked Hassan Reddick as the MVP, but yeah, the other but three I mentioned of us picked door. MVP. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I mentioned as a dark horse MVP of Jalen Hurts. And, you know, so it happens. You don't pay, you don't have a good take, but, you know, the noise of, uh, you know, cancel, you cancel the podcast, you know, bunch of bums, blah, 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 X, Y, and Z, and the fake threats. Like, listen, you got all those comments. They'd be all crying if they lost it, lost that game for the Chiefs. So I love the exposure. I can't wait to make more takes and I'm excited for next season. Excellent, excellent. And hey, well, every's right. every's got big fucking balls behind a keyboard. I'll tell you what. If here's the way I see it, it's like, yeah, we may have been wrong about you know our projection with like the the score and whatnot, but like it comes down to possessions. Either you convert on possessions or you don't. And I thought that the game kind of played out kind of like I thought was going to. It's just that these teams cash in more than they didn't. Um, but I like I say, keep bringing the love, like keep bringing the hate. It's going to have, you know, it's going to feed the algorithm, no, what, no matter what, so benefit regardless. But, um, yeah, no, I just – I find it hilarious that, like, incels come out to point fingers and talk shit when they're behind a keyboard. But it's like Matt's actually the one out here doing the hard work and, you know, making it happen. And at the end of the day, like, we're, we're, we're having fun. We're busting balls. We're not trying to be perfect. We're just kind of giving our two cents. I mean, I was the first one out here on this show – basically proclaiming that I hate the Chiefs because I have inroads to hate them. And you guys are kind of along the same vein with Philly. So it's like we do our thing. You see it on every show, and they get things wrong too. So if, if you're going to criticize our batting average, so be it. Yeah. I'll even make – one second now. I'll make yeah. this one take. Majority of us are NFC East fans and two Giants fans and a Cowboy fan. So for us to pick Philadelphia, that <laughs> says what we believe oh. in this team – and, you know, the system that's going on. So it's not, you know, yes, I, I don't like the Chiefs, but I thought that the Eagles were a better football team, and I still think that they're a better football team. It just happens to be that sometimes the better football team doesn't win the game. Yeah. Well, it's like this with Goodell, with Mahomes. That's why. I mean, I'm a diehard Jet fan, so didn't really have much of an impact on me. <laughs> Jets and the Chiefs. I mean, knowing the fact the Jets are probably never going to make the Super Bowl ever in this millennium, which would be nice. But, uh, you know, it – it didn't really have much of an impact on me. It just, it's, that was only was frustrating seeing two elite level quarterbacks and we haven't had one in God knows how long. So that was a little frustrating as a Jet fan. Yeah. I was just going to say, bring, bring the smoke, everyone. Uh, you know, it's a prediction. It's our opinion. It's how we feel. We back it up with stuff. Some of the comments just call us idiots and they cancel the show. Give us reasons. I don't care. Give us feedback. Tell us why we <laughs> suck. I really don't care. Generate it. Share with your friends. Tell them all that we suck. I don't really care. Bring all the smoke, but at least give us facts to back it up and just name call us. You know, like Brian just said, there's two Giants fans, a Raider fan, a Cowboys fan. We all picked our mortal enemy other than Alex. You know, mm -hmm. and she, she, he hates the Chiefs, so that's given. But we all picked the team that we all hate. At least me, Matt, and Brian. Oh, yeah. And right. we all picked that, and we made a mistake it happens it's a prediction it's our opinion we all brought it up facts as the reason why i was the closest on the score i said it was going to be a shootout and i wanted that and it ended up being the case i was close i think i was only a point or two off or something like that i got a, almost a lock i just picked the wrong team um but it's, it's it's cool to see interaction and all that we all engage that share that with your friends talk about it talk with us ask us questions we'll we'll respond just if you're going to dive in and attack us at least back it up with some facts we'll laugh For about sure. it we love it. We find it funny. But, you know, at the end of the day, the people who are positive to us will be positive to you. If you're negative to us, we'll be negative to you. But again, bring a smoke. We don't care. This is all our opinions of how we feel. And we're going to continue to do it no matter what. It's a lot easier to knock over a 16-year-old when he's not behind a keyboard. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> well, yeah. And like I said, that's all we're going to give for the trolls on this platform. We're not going to do this. Probably ever again, first and last time, as I mentioned at the top of the show and to these guys, it's just 
I think it's just a milestone for this show for the first real, real exposure and oh, yeah. semi-viral video like that. And it's only going to continue us more and the motivation is higher and um, we're ready for all opinions and we're going to keep it going. And the show is not going to get canceled. So Congrats. let's keep it going and let's start this next chapter for all of us and glad I've Hayden joined too. So now let's reflect on the end of the year with a few stories that are taking place uh, right here, right now. Alex Young just dropped in this chat that there is allegedly a report. Actually, I'll let Alex um, give the official report since he read it. Alex Young, what's going yep. on with Dan Snyder at the moment? So I just got a report a little while we were talking about trolls, uh, while we were having that conversation. The report just came out. Uh, this is a couple of different people. But um, it looks like the NFL owners are going to move towards a vote to remove Dan Snyder as the owner of the Commanders if he doesn't sell the franchise. Mm -hmm. Um then it looks like it's going to most likely take place relatively soon um, because, you know, Snyder, is, as we all know, has not been the best of owners. The owners seem to be now fed up with everything and all of his demands. So it looks like if he doesn't sell the team, they will try to boot him out. Yeah, and there were reports about him looking for an asking price at about 6 to $6.5 million, which includes the possibility or the likelihood of a new stadium being built. And there were rumors that he that one of the favorites in buying the team is the Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, who uh, allegedly has had a little rivalry with Dan Snyder, as he owns the Washington Post, and they obviously haven't been kind and have reported stories against Snyder. And there have been reports that he one of the reasons why he's asking for so much for that franchise is because he specifically doesn't want to sell to Jeff Bezos, who was at one point literally the richest man of the world, but obviously a top five regardless. And this seems to uh, be of no surprise that the owners themselves might have to literally kick him out. So do you guys think that's going to be the case or do you think Dan Snyder will uh, cave and either sell to Bezos or some other wealthy billionaire owner because clearly this is the move now. We are selling them to individual people, individual billionaires, The uh, what, no matter what the franchise is, uh, whether you're Matt Ishiba from the, who just bought the Suns in the NBA mm -hmm. or this situation right here. I know the Trailblazers are about to be up for sale, but yep. you know that's the case. Mm -hmm. We are selling them to big, bad billionaires. And uh, is Dan Snyder going to be the next one there, or they're going to give him the boot? I'll uh, I'll give my take. I I don't I don't think he's going to forcibly sell. Um, these owners have a lot of pride. Um, when you own an organization as as large as the Washington Redskins, that's worth six or seven billion dollars, you want to hold on to that as long as possible. I think there's a sense of pride there, um, no matter what you do. Even with uh, in the NBA with the Clippers, even you saw Donald Sterling, they they, they literally forcibly removed him. He didn't sell on his own. Um, I think a lot of these owners are set in their ways. They really don't care who they offend or they don't really care what fans or just the overall population thinks of them. And I think I think he's gonna I think he's gonna have to be forced to be removed. I do not think he's gonna sell on his own. Even though he even though he said they're looking to sell the team, I think it would take an offer that's gonna really blow his socks off. Like I would say he's gotta get I would say he's gotta get seven or eight billion for the team. I think he's gonna want to absolutely I think someone's gonna have to over overpay. Gonna yeah, Hayden, I completely yeah. agree with you on that one. I, I, you know, I think they're gonna have to forcibly remove him. And if they do forcibly remove him, I think it's a good step in the right direction for the NFL and the actual owners because, you know, the thing about the NFL and all of these associations, professional uh, sports associations in the United States, is that they're not really uh, governed or you know, you know, controlled and mandated by anything in the United States, which is good. You know, we, we like private enterprise and stuff like that. But at the same time, though. You know they can. It could be a, a you know an old old man's club, and they could do whatever the fuck they want. So um, having this you know consensus that you know this guy is having a bad look for the NFL, and we want him out, actually shows the power of the owners, and it shows that they could actually make um, good on their promises and actually make change for once in a while, and listen to the fans, listen to the people. Come because there's always a consensus of the NFL that um, you know they listen to the fans until it affects their money. So having this actually happen now is it a step in the right direction, I see. So, uh, yeah, uh, I hope he gets forcibly removed. I think he will get forcibly removed because I don't think he's ever going to leave. And I think it's going to take about 25% more of the asking price for him mm. to actually get it sold. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm like reading, kind of going through some of these reports, and it's like 
the request that Snyder has if he sells the team is like crazy. Like he's asking to be indemnified against future legal like, like action and costs if he does sell the team. <laughs> and that's what's pissing off the owners because they already know he's in like lawsuit after lawsuit. So they're like, we're not going to clear that. So it is like Brian said, definitely a step in the right direction that they're, they're usually, you know, the owners kind of stick together, and protect one another. But now it's kind of great to see that they're just done with this guy who's done nothing but, you know, terrible things. He's really been an owner of a marquee franchise. Um, I think if the writing's on the wall that he will get voted out, I think that might change his, his demands of trying to sell the team. But yeah, I think someone's going to have to give him an asking price and like over what, you know, $6 billion would be insane. He's, not, he's going to have um, to get seven or eight. Yeah, I think he's definitely going to seven or eight. And I think the only person to do that is Bezos. And Bezos, seemed like, you know, we all were talking about him. I brought it up, you know, Snyder's not really letting him bid on the team. They're looking at a couple other owners um, to see if they get, you know, bids from them. But uh, yeah, I think it's going to take a crazy amount over a vast price to get this guy out. Um, but it's not. I hope all the owners force him to remove him. They don't have to take any legal action removing him and getting out of this league because I think the NFL will definitely be in a better spot without uh, Daniel Snyder. And that's not even being Giants biased. I think that's just being an NFL fan. Yeah, it's, he, he's as I, stubborn I as it gets. I, I'm kind of torn because it's like if we're just going on the merits of like him and how he runs his organization and like what his past experience has been, like I'm totally with you guys. Like I have no problem with him being removed. I just don't like a fascistic kind of precedent set where we're just kind of doing a trial by fire against the league. I kind of look at all these franchises and these organizations as they're bought and sold. I kind of look at them as like states' rights versus like federal rights. And I don't really like see like really the purpose and, you know, meaning of just kind of, you know, forcing guys out just because of their track record. I think that a better solution, you know, in a free market sense would just be to have some, you know, some ultimatum where, it's like he has to sell or he has to have like a peaceful transfer of power. Because I think that there's probably plenty of guys that would do good for the league that would be hired within internally that he could kind of transfer over a couple of years time, a slow transition of power and responsibility and ownership where he could still get his asking, but they can kind of meet him in the middle. I know it's probably, you know, pie in the sky. These guys have a ton of ego, but, and, uh, um, you know, a ton of pride, like, um, like you guys all mentioned, but it just, you know, I just don't like really the precedent set that we're going to just start ousting owners, you know, as a trial by fire. I mean, I, I, make, I actually. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll make this one comment quick. Um, So like the way I think about it, just thought of it came to my mind right now. Like, so he probably is going to put a hard up fight against not mm -hmm. selling the team. Um, How about this? When other countries don't do what we like to do, what do we do? We throw tariffs on them, right? We try to isolate them, make it difficult. He doesn't well, sit. Say again? <laughs> we blow up their pipelines. Yeah, blow up their <laughs> pipeline. We call, you know, we wreck shit, right? So, so this is the way I think about it. Very, very, very simple, right? He doesn't sell the team in, in one month. He loses a second round pick. He doesn't do it in two months. He loses a first round pick the following year. He loses yep. it in three. He gets his cap space cut in half. You keep on hurting the team and, and the fan base until they force him out. It's that simple. It's like a regime and you want to you get rid of power. It's that simple. Because this guy's not going to leave. And he's going to pick and choose who he wants to sell to. And there's only so many people that could offer that much money unless you combine people into a conglomerate. Yeah, and say. to get that many people is very difficult. You know, you have to agree with everyone on the same image and likeness. You know, my first idea came to mind. He doesn't have enough money yet like LeBron, but Kevin Durant's from Washington. If he could be on that, you know, a group of people to get the commanders, that'd be cool. But they're going to might have to, you know, affect the team and the fan base to get him out with some draft comp you know, getting rid of some draft compensation or slashing his cap space. I don't know. Do like, you think they'll do like a Green Bay model where they just have like a board of directors? No, and no, I, don't no I, don't, I don't think they would. No, I don't think they would. Either. I think they're, it's all about the billionaire owners now. I don't even think groups are going to be a thing moving forward. Like, I really think these franchises, these um, owners are just worth billions that they could just – buy it as a major investment for themselves. I don't know who the other candidates are possibly are. Uh, I, I, had it, I had it in front of in, in this article, it's looking like um Philadelphia set for the Sixers owner Josh Harris, Houston Rockers oh, owner, Harris, uh, for Tillman for Tia, and then Jeff Bezos. Those yeah, are the two the two names other than Jeff Bezos. So the 76ers owner and the Rockets owner. 
you also got to remember that they're probably not also borrowing this fully in cash, you know, like it's not, you know, they might, oh, be, yeah. you know, it's like a house, like a mortgage or something yes. like that, loan from a bank, like, you know, it's like, yeah. this is like, they just need to have the good faith that they can make this money eventually, which, you know, if you get well, that, you get to, that collateral it, down, you could just make it a loan for probably like yeah. two, three seasons to pay back your loan. Yeah, if my, you get, yeah, if you get Washington, you get a marquee franchise, though. So that's like a key thing. And like Matt said, you might get a new stadium involved. You, they, whoever yeah, buys this thing is going to be, it's yeah, they're going to, they're, they're going to be set in a few years. Yeah, it's going, it's going to be like the Mets with, with you know, with Cohen. It's going to take a little while, but he's spending the money now for his long term investment. The next billionaire owner that owns this, the Commanders team, is going to spend the money so that a couple years down the line they'll be making that and then some. I think, I think the case study to be made, you know, comparing how. You know, the Redskins, you know, uh, handle this transition of power in the next few years is going to be like looking at Carolina because Carolina is yes. mm -hmm. and it seems like, you know, he may be swinging and missing in the short term, but it seems like he's really, re really willing to take risks. So he's could, trying as well it, as the it, Broncos, it, 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 the Waltons, who just yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this too. but it's you know, nice. <laughs> I, I would feel bad if Tony Gonzalez had to call Redskins games because then it's just like. Damn, dude, you stole my ex-wife, and now I gotta call games for you. Fuck you, Bezos. <laughs> Is that? I didn't know that was the case. So, oh, sucks to <laughs> suck. Anyways, yep. moving on. Um, we will definitely see Dan. I'm pretty sure Dan Snyder will be no more very soon, one way or the other. So let's talk about something everyone loves to talk about as we head into a draft: the quarterback situation. <clears throat> Plenty of teams looking. Uh, there's obviously we're going to start this with one name and his name is Aaron Rodgers because he's literally setting the market for the quarterbacks right now. He at the time of this recording, he was in the darkness retreat, was there for three days instead of four. And uh, we await if he's going to make his announcement on Pat McAfee on Tuesday. Um, they were off this past week. I don't think it's been confirmed if he's coming on or not, but let's say there's a good chance that he's coming on. When Aaron Rodgers joins Pat McAfee, is he going to say, I'm going to stay with the Green Bay Packers or the I like a trade here or wherever? Um, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to stay in Green Bay. That's just personally what I think. Um, I do not necessarily know if he can handle the New York media um, with his eccentric personality. I don't necessarily know about that. Um, I, think I don't know. I don't I think, think he would actually. Do I, I well feel like the Jets the need a uh, little bit more of a mobile quarterback, and Aaron Rodgers is a, is a pure pocket passer. Their O line hasn't held up, so I don't necessarily know if it would be a great fit um, for New York. Obviously, his production—he won the MVP in 2021 and 2020, so he has the production. He's won a Super Bowl, but that being said, even with those teams in Green Bay, they never really had that much postseason success outside of a couple of NFC Championship games. They never got back to the Lombardi since. 2010 so he definitely has something to prove and i don't necessarily know if the jets or another team are necessarily a team that's going to give it to him i feel like he's comfortable in green bay um i definitely do feel like though what they they need to do is they need if they, if they were to stay in green bay they need to upgrade the receiving position because last year they drafted christian watson they still have lazard romeo dobbs they have a they have a couple of good guys but they need to get that one big time player in green bay if he's going to stay so I don't necessarily know. Well, I don't necessarily know. My gut feeling is that he's going to stay in Green Bay. That's where I. That's where I think he's going to stay. Uh, I don't know about what you guys think, but that's what I think. He or, or he's going to go to Las Vegas to team up with Demonte Adams again. Yeah. So, uh, fair point, Hayden. I agree with that. Um, but I'm going to take the other side. I think he is going to tr get traded, and I think he's going to get traded to two teams. I don't think it's going to be the Raiders. I think it's going to be either the Tennessee Titans or it's going to be the New York Jets. Um. I think Tennessee now with a new GM has a, a very tight window right now because the defense is good, but it's going to get old eventually. They have, um, you know, they have a young receiver in um, Tra uh, Traylon Burks. You know, they have Hooper and that rookie tight end as well. They got Derrick Henry, who, and you know, has. you can only have so much time before his wheels do fall off. And maybe he has a season or two left of prime time, or, you know, he's like an Emmett Smith kind of guy and does this for 18 years. It just depends on what happens. But, you know, I expect them to be be making big splashes in free agency, trying to restructure some deals, make some trades. And, you know, they're sitting with the number 11 pick. You know, Green Bay has 15, but if they can make some package together, I think that they might try to get him. Um, Just also because um 
it might not take that much to get Aaron Rodgers because of his age and his cap hit. Oh, I don't agree with you on that. You have a Super Bowl quarterback in Lombardi. It's going to take two firsts at least to get him. I don't agree yeah, with you. Yeah, no, no. I think now I think two firsts. I think two firsts. But I also think that, you know, you, a lot of quarterbacks, you know, look at what it took to get Russell Wilson. I don't expect them to get Russell Wilson yeah. kind of picks and stuff like that or players. But, you know, two first-round picks to a team that's usually in the, 15, in the teens um, isn't really a, that much of a big stretch for them. And then with the Jets, I think, you know, um, Zach Wilson's not your answer. Mike White's not your answer. He's a glorified backup. Joe Flacco is a statue, basically, that has a mechanical arm, can't run out of the pocket, just consistently yeah, gets sacked. Yeah, do I know um, you know, this rookie this rookie class of quarterbacks isn't really that good. They have a lot of potential, but they really don't have – There's a couple of guys that are pretty good in this rookie class. Yeah, I'm like well, CJ Shock. CJ Shock, yeah, yeah, height. I, I height, though. He's good. Here's your issue. You have height. You have, a, uh, you have a tall offensive line on the Jets from, if I remember, just their heights and stuff like that. You constantly have to deal with pass rush, especially with the Dolphins and with um, the Patriots, the great pass rushes. And you need a guy that has a little bit more weight on his frame mm. and it's some mobility. Be- Tennessee makes some sense, like you said, because they're in the AFC South, so he's going to get to yeah. be from Houston. He's exactly. going to get from Jacksonville, Indianapolis. So that actually makes some sense. Makes Tennessee. sense. But the Jets, favor. you know, with the Jets, you know, I don't think Aaron Rodgers is afraid of the media. I think, you know, he's a Cal- you know, he's a like West Coast kind of guy that really, you know, it won't really affect him that much. He's pretty much um, the embodiment of like a Joe Cool. He doesn't really give a fuck anymore. Um, and it would help help his brand out. Um, and, you know, they have a loaded skill group and a great secondary. Yeah. You know, with with um you know Sauce Gardner so you know they have Sauce Gardner DJ Reed they have DJ yeah Reed. exactly but, they but have you the got ability. also figure you got also figure with the Jets their defense is going to regress next year because they had an, oh obviously they had, one of yes. the, they had an they had an elite defense top five in the league so I I gotta I tell people I'm like listen they're probably not going to be as good as what they were last year someone inevitably is going to get hurt um so I feel like the, the the idea that people are saying the Jets just need average quarterback play to make the playoffs. Oh, I completely disagree with you on that. Like, I, I think their defense is inevitably going to take a step back, and they need a great, I, and they need a great, great quarterback. I don't think it's no, just yeah. going to take average quarterback play. And when you're playing in the AFC East, you're playing Josh Allen. Um, you're going to be playing two with Tyree Kill. Um, you got to figure Mac Jones is going to be a little bit better under Bill O'Brien as the OC. Yeah, I don't feel yeah. like it's going to take average quarterback. And you're also playing in the loaded AFC where. The discrepancy between the quarterbacks and the AFC is like the AFC is here in terms of quarterbacks, NFC is here. You're competing yep. versus yep. – like I don't know what Aaron Rodgers is going to want to compete against. Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, um, Justin Herbert, just to That's, name a few. Even if Lamar, if he stays in the AFC, like the quarterback discrepancy between the – Trevor Lawrence too. The quarterback discrepancy in the AFC is completely different than the quarterback discrepancy in the NFC. I think he may want to stay in the NFC. I don't necessarily know if he wants to go against all those guys in the AFC personally. I think that's why he's going to stay in the NFC. I mean, I do because, like, per, I mean, personally slash professionally, I hate Aaron Rodgers, but, like, I would gladly accept him on my team because we don't have a quarterback. So it's like, you know, it, and, and and his relationship with Devontae, like, that there, there's there's no deniability there. Like, um, but I just see him and his personality, his demeanor. I don't see him leaving Green Bay. I think he kind of does this dog and pony show, of just floating these feelers to see if what his market asking price is every off season. And he kind of paints Green Bay into a corner where they kind of acquiesce to his needs in the off season. And, you know, that, that can only take you so far. So I think it's just going to be a matter of judgment, whether or not Green Bay um, weighs the risk tolerance, whether they want to let him walk or do a package deal, because, they're probably thinking, I, you know, we take for granted like what Green Bay's uh, power and authority is to call the shots here. But I think that the, the the onus is on them to figure out what they want to do with Aaron versus what Aaron wants to do and where he wants to go. I agree that the best football decision for him is probably to stay in Green Bay. But if you're going to go to the AFC, I would probably go to Miami just with the pieces and the coach and situation available. Yeah, I- I'm, I've been going back and forth uh, with Aaron. It's just because the dude just drives me insane because he thinks one way and then next thing he changes his mind. Uh, you know, I, I was locked set on thinking he was going to Las Vegas with the Raiders, the Bond relationship, and then Peter King reported that I messaged you guys today that, like, you know, supposedly the Raiders are out, which is funny. I heard that the Raiders are out, too. They just, they just got out on Derek Carson. What the hell are they doing? Whatever. <laughs> so... That was oh, a you know, thing. yeah. I, I, I guess they may uh, they be in they may be in line for quarterback. The Raiders, yeah. yeah Jimmy just... Jimmy G and draft a quarterback. 
Or who, who was, oh, Stidham. The they'll, they'll, they'll ride with Stidham. It's all good. Their savior is, is Jarrett Stidham. Yeah, okay. Um, so that was my my thing. I was like, oh, you know, Vegas makes sense. Big market, you know, goes over there. Then I was thinking the Jets for a little bit, but I just don't know how the New York media will will, will handle it. I think Rodgers loves the attention. I think he'd be fine in the New York media. He lives for it. But I think after a little while, they can just read right through him. So that's why I think the best thing for him is to stay in Green Bay. And then finally, yeah, I know we feel like a broken record, but he really needs to sit down and be like, you need to listen on what this team needs. Like, we need to go X, Y, Z here. Well, they need to here. upgrade at the receiving position. Yeah, exactly. And, and I feel they, like they, that, they yeah. really need to upgrade. They, yeah. I mean, their like, offensive line is still pretty good with Bakhtari. Yeah. I mean, they have a pretty yeah, good like they have, they have a decent core all around to work with. But it's just like every year where we're all like, the Packers need this. And the next, you know, they draft the position completely different than what we thought they were expecting. You know, like we're well, they just, have, oh, this yeah. is the first year they drafted this, a receiver. I think last year was like yeah. the first time they drafted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're like, oh, we're I'm all like, oh, finally they they finally did it. You know, like we've been yeah. asking for a receiver, but you know, so I think the best thing for him is to stay in Green Bay. But he really has to kind of start being like the Brady leader, where he's like, I want this piece and that piece to come here, get them here, and we can ride. Yeah. Well, here's the thing with here's the difference though with him and Brady. Like Brady was never a top paid quarterback. He always took yeah, no, he sacrificed. And that's why he had yeah. like, he sacrificed. Aaron Rodgers doesn't want to sacrifice, no, so it's not going to happen. Yeah. So the only way they're going to get a Should receiver is if only way they get a receiver is if they offer um like a, a high pick for DeAndre Hopkins mm-hmm. or they trade Jordan Love and like a third for like DJ Moore. So well, from ha- Carolina. So it's like you know. That's the only way they're going to get a top kind of receiver that isn't drafted because they don't they they just they refuse to you know help him out in any way shape or form. Um, so they're going to have to use some asset that they already have to get it because they don't like using draft cap. But, but I'm, I'm kind of seeing that narrative though because it's like they they had the one seed a few years ago. He had home field advantage. He still should the bet against San Fran. It's like oh, yeah, he's been, he's yeah, terrible. Yeah. He's still yeah. Yeah. They, they lost thirteen to ten. Thirteen many- to ten. Keep building in excuses for first round exits. This guy won a Super Bowl 13 years ago. It's like at a certain point, he's just too selfish or he just shits the bed. And it's like, and the actually, just to quick quickly switch gears, the one the one um team that no one's really uh really brought up yet that may be an interesting wrinkle in this in terms of the NFC is what if he goes to New Orleans? I That's mean, what I was thank you too. Well, New Orleans, have- New Orleans maybe going with car. That's what I hear too. They got yeah. a defense. They have receivers. Dennis Allen is a young guy. I think he could really coach, but I think that's a really interesting situation that we haven't mentioned yet. Yeah, I like that too. I like. I, I mean, I, 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 I'm hearing places. Derek Carr could go to New Orleans. That's what I'm hearing personally. They, they're very, they're very high in Carr. New Orleans Saints. You know, with all the uh, conflicting reports with Aaron Rodgers himself, and I think he'd be fine in the New York media, and he would just troll because he plays the media like a fiddle, yeah. whether they realize it or not, and. If he comes on Pat this week, I don't think he will. He doesn't seem like he'll announce just because they're out of spider. He'll say, I'm still thinking, even though we are awaiting the official tampering he'll go season on a th- begins three now. Month, he'll go on a three-month darkness retreat for all of free agency, so we have no idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah, but at the end of the day, I think he will remember that he has $60,000 waiting for him for one more year. And even if, quote-unquote, Green Bay is tired of him, He'll just keep collecting that cash and then just go in the the sunset. But I think they'll obviously start him over Jordan Love. I mean, duh. And uh, remember, Green Bay was just a win away from uh, making the playoffs again. And Not saying much. Yeah. (laughs) Well, the NFC was a little crappy in the the end of the year. But in the end of the day, Aaron Rodgers – Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers. I don't think any – he. one thing that he says is is true – we don't know what's going on in his head, nope. and nobody does. I think we have to remember that mm-hmm. coming into this. But um, at the end of the day, go to where the money is, and uh, your team was going in the right direction uh, at, towards the end of this season. You can only add on from there. So we can't get any worse than it than it has been. So we'll see if Aaron Rodgers goes there. But continuing with the uh, quarterback this discussion here, and the Jets. I saw Carson Wentz was released. Just watch them <laughs> pick him up. Please, and God, try no. to convince. God help us. God Please, help us. God, try to convince no. the God, uh, God, fr- Jets franchise God, themselves. No. The one who picked Adam Gase when you could have picked Mike McCarthy in there. 
and they try to convince that this was the right decision after he was embarrassed out of Miami. And then, thanks for the hire of Joe Douglas and another great move. He's been, yeah. he's, he's been phenomenal. The team hasn't made the playoffs in five years, but you know. So. And we know how you feel on that, Hayden. God, don't even get and, me um, Oh my God. <laughs> the, I mean, it's <laughs> for another the, day. The, I, the frustration I that goes. I can't even deal with it anymore. With the Jets themselves all first awaiting this decision on Rodgers and then Derek Carr, and the story has been I going on. I told you they're going to wind weeks. up with Ryan Tannehill. That's what I told you. They're going to fall. They're going to miss on Carr. They're going to miss on Rodgers, and they're probably going to get Ryan Tannehill. That's yes. what's probably going to happen. I think Tannehill or Wentz is the case, and Wentz will just be a, as a joke. Well, I'll, 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 no. I'll, I'll shoot someone if they. Uh, Please, I don't know. Wentz. I will, uh, I will literally, like, I will be in screaming if they get Carson Wentz. And the one thing to account is that the Jets probably stay, they still want Zach Wilson to see what he does. Well, know. they want to develop him for the next like they yeah. didn't do it right with him. They they put they played him too early. He needed to be developing for two or three years under a guy and then see maybe he can resurrect his career with the Jets or somewhere else. But he wasn't ready to play. And that's he where they in... he didn't play anyone at BYU. When they were at BYU, the best team he played was uh so like Coastal Carolina that one time. He they played no one. They went like twelve and one. They played no one in that COVID shortened season. So it was like hard to really evaluate him. And and that's where the Aaron Rodgers makes the most fundamental sense. But we know that that's likely not going to be the case. That, so why I mean, are Rodgers you going to have a good relationship with exactly, for the long so. term? Unless you uh, there's we're not adding a second quarterback in uh, play. So look it, for the Jets, tough. serious. Look for the Jets to be in like. Like they, they, there's a lot of teams looking at Hendon Hooker. That's who they should look at in like the third or fourth round. They can probably get him at a good price. Let's say the guy turns into like a superstar and they have a competition with him and he somehow wins, like Russell Wilson did with the Is Seattle that- Seahawks in 2012. They yeah. were they were with Flynn that one year and then Russell Wilson won the competition. Like look for the Jets to draft the quarterback in the third or fourth round and, and really see if they can develop him. Like they haven't done it in the past. But that being said, if you haven't, if you got to keep trying with quarterbacks. Like you can't not draft a quarterback. Like every team. Needs a quarterback. Anyone could say that they have – you can never have too many quarterbacks. Look at the San Francisco 49ers. When they had lost Purdy, Jimmy G, and uh, and Trey and Lance, they, 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 they didn't have – Trey they had Lance and, and so like, exactly. with the four. So you have to – like, it, quarterback is always a need. There's no one – I don't want to hear anyone say, like, quarterback isn't an issue. It's always a pressing issue. Like, you always need a quarterback. No matter where – in this league without a quarterback. And, and if his, you think you have a guy that you yourself. like, you pick him. History shows also that you say, can't win. Without him, yeah. I also say this: if you like, if you do fall out of the Aaron Rodgers, Derek Carr, like Jimmy G sweepstakes, like look to guys like Andy Dalton, even Tannehill. Just what about if you Baker Mayfield? To... Baker Mayfield, no one's talking nah. about. Baker Mayfield could play. I yeah. look, look what he did in yeah, LA. He could, but Baker listen, Mayfield he's could not play. the answer. He's not. He's, he's not, not the guy right now. Matt right? Ryan's still so available. He brings he's a lot good, of moxie for New York that I feel like people. Yeah, wouldn't. he does. He does bring a lot of moxie. He would definitely re-energize the team a little bit. And he, he they would, would. I feel like some of the guys his... actually would get behind him in comparison to Zach Wilson. Matt Ryan would available. give Moxie. Yeah, he would give Moxie. But like, if you want to, like, I don't care about Moxie right now. If you don't hit on this, <laughs> you should draft a quarterback or you should try to develop Wilson. And if that's the case, you get a legit veteran that can at least be sustainable, healthy, and play average to above average. Uh, football. You got it. So, you uh, got it. You got to get someone now. This is the last year for Doe Douglas. We've had five years of this shit. It's enough. You got to get someone right now. Yeah, this you guys. Not, there's no more well, development. Do. You guys have they said do. it every right now, single year. And, and we're not every single year. single year. If, that if they miss the playoffs this year, if they go six and eleven this year, he is gone without a question. He's coaching. Oh, hundred percent. This oh, all is all his contract gone. year. They'll He's got to get an MVP They'll guy right now. There's no more developing. If it was a if it was a different GM, if it wasn't year five of his tenure, and the team had some success, that's different. And you're in year five, and you haven't made the playoffs. You got to make it this year. Like this, they're all in this year. They have to yeah. be. Yes. No, I agree. They ha- they have to be all in. I mean, it's just how I mean, especially well, no with the more, main they quarterback. They have to be all in. They have to have to walk away with a they have to be they have to be all in, but will they be all in? Will it actually we, yeah, happen? Or, yeah. You know, yeah. it is the Jets. I like exactly. I, I don't I don't trust a single thing or like have faith in any anything they've done ever. Um, you know, they've only ever really had a success with 
a rookie who was really bad and just lucked out with the good defense. They had Joe Namath. If you really look at Joe Namath's staffs, he was well, asked. Chad and he Pennington just, for a couple and, of years. And Pennington. Had Chad Pennington Chad for a couple Pennington years. Till he, till he Chad Pennington. Problems. Everyone, 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 you know, loves Joe Namath. Joe Willie really wasn't that oh, good. He was the most he was overrated quarterback of all time. Oh, my God. Over, overrated. Overrated. He was so yeah, overrated. It's because yeah, he called his shot in the Super Bowl. Yes. That's the reason why he got out He called the shot. Yeah. You know, you know, Brett Favre was maybe the best quarterback you guys ever had, and he was horrible at the, uh, at some points in that season. <laughs> well, so he got like, injured. You know, he, eight, he got eight, injured, and everything fell apart. Yeah, he thought, this is going to be a giant Super Bowl, and then he got yeah. Yeah. yeah, listen, at the end of the day, they just need something. And it's like, whatever they do, it will be the better option. But at this point, I, I, I wouldn't expect anything miraculous to happen. Just like, you know, I always say this, right? You're not going to go from zero to 100 immediately. There's so many oh, teams. Oh, no, that, I, I agree with you on that. So many and... teams that do that. And now look at the Rams. They did that, and they're an abomination now. Just be average for a little bit. Who cares about the playoffs, all right? It, it, listen, you're not winning the Super Bowl. It doesn't matter because oh, you no, never no, 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 no. That's not, not being in New York. In New York, it's you're not being in New York. No, it doesn't matter about where you are. 13 years, like you yeah, have to look at now. It like, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The, but the, the whole idea of being in New York doesn't matter anymore because the Knicks haven't done shit in years. The Yankees hey, don't do come shit. On. Come on, the Yankees don't, don't do shit. Buffalo, 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 yeah, the Knicks are beating the Celtics right now. Come on. Listen, Buffalo doesn't do shit, all right? Um, Rangers don't Buffalo's do shit. Buffalo's cursed. The Nets don't do shit. You know what I'm saying? Rangers, so it's like, Rangers are better to be good. The Rangers, are, Rangers are up I mean, the Jets right now have the longest playoff drought because the Kings are probably going to make the playoffs this year. Yeah, exactly. Listen, but the whole New York bubble. longest playoff drought in all sports. The whole New York bubble thing is a joke. The Giants are finally coming out of it because they have a good quality head coach. Like, the whole New York bubble is bullshit. Just be average for a little bit and entertain. Like, I'm a right. Cowboy fan. I know – I'm a realistic one. I know we're not winning the Super Bowl next year or the year after that. It's not going to happen. But I'm okay right. with my 10-win seasons because it's entertaining. Right. I am, well, I, Alex, yes. I, Let's let Ronaldo go. He yeah. raises I refresh his hand nicely. everybody's memory of what NFL stands for, not for long? Can we recognize that I want to give a feather and a cap to Hayden because in your fifth year, you should be evaluating the guy who's running the show. And if you're not making the playoffs, you have missed your opportunity. So what I'm saying is there's clearly parity in this league, unlike any other league where you can have a slow ascension and build and grow and take your time and be patient. But with the NFL, it's purposely designed and set up where you're supposed to go three wins, seven wins playoffs immediately yep. and yeah every exactly team go, and every exactly. team goes through that pro- process whether it's luck or if it's sheer strategy and planning so i, I hate to disagree but, and agree with hayden but it's like this team is due to at least have a playoff berth at the very minimum yeah, at, the ver- at the very least like with yeah. the, you draft the offensive and defensive rookie there you got to make the playoffs like there's no <laughs> there's no next year like this is the year it has to be there no, I know. I, 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 I understand that, but, like, you're fighting for a wild card spot, and there's two teams in there that are going to be playoff teams, and then you have the AFC West that's going to have two playoff teams. So, basically, you're fighting for the seventh seed. But, Brian, you can't think that's like that. You, you can't you think like that. Games. Absolutely not. When you haven't made the playoffs in 13 years, you have to think. You have, to, is a, you have to, to be able to evaluate teams and, and what, they're, what, what their asking price is from a personnel standpoint. So if you're not making the playoffs, it's the reason that players go nuts when they're like not on the first um, on pro bowls versus first team, all pro, you know what I mean? Like, because that's where they make their money. It's the same thing with evaluating players and teams going into an off season. You have to see steady progress, almost like a shareholders mindset. Like, you know, all, all this stuff about progress with the jets and all the great picks they made, it hasn't translated on the field. Like you could say all you want, but like, if the wins aren't coming, who cares? Like, I, I don't care right. about you drafting the offense. Right. Right. Like, you won seven games last year. That's the most wins you had in your tenure. Like, that has to be yeah. thought about. Like, we can't go every year thinking, oh, like, we made progress, but we're not good enough quite yet. Like, you, you have to – there has to, to come a time. For- there has to come a time eventually where you have yeah. to be good enough. Well, yeah, you got to be coming yeah. from- Well, I was just going to say, coming from experience, being mad have dealt with this with the Giants, right? We're, we're diet <laughs> Giants fans. The last, you know, eight, nine years have been brutal for us, right? But then we were seeing little things with Gettleman here and there, some solid picks here and there, but then it just ended up being a disaster. And then all of us were pointing fingers, you have to get out of here, right? Like with Gettleman. And he was there for five years, whatever. Yeah, I mean, that's the same thing. That's the same thing. And everything was going backwards. Once we get a new GM coach, I feel like it's You run into, you run into, you know, there's only so many nice things you can say about someone until it all falls apart. And that's what happened with Gettleman. He retired. He got him out of here. Joe Judge talked his way out of getting firing. They're getting fired. Then we bring in the right GM. We bring in the right coach. And now look, now we're on the positive. The same thing with with the Jets. I'm just saying, just from what I've seen, 
Douglas gets hyped up after hyped up after hyped up year in, year out. Whiffed on a quarterback. I understand they had a really good draft class this year. The team's young. The, the core, core thing's here. Then I'm not saying they're a quarterback away winning Super Bowl, but there has to be progress here. You won seven games. I'm not, I don't think, or whatever the, you ended up winning, I don't think it's unrealistic for Jets fans to ask for the playoff this year. I think that's what me and Matt were expecting from this year. Mm-hmm. We wanted just to see some yeah. progress with this team, with this draft class. And then, okay, maybe next year we get in the playoffs. So that, that's what it was. We got into the playoffs this year. I think that's what the Jets fans are looking for this year. Douglas has done solid in certain aspects, drafted a core, all this stuff. They were close to the playoffs. They fell apart in the second half. But this is his year to prove it. And if not, then I think they're going to clean out. So I think he's gone. I think Sal has gone. I think all of them are gone. Yeah, but I, I don't think Hayden's, that. you know, unrealistic. I just think, you know, and, and Brian, it, it is tough. The AFC is very, very tough. But this team is poised to make a run. And if not, if they, if they fall short of even getting seven wins, then I think changes are going to make. I think there has to be some sort of progress in the wins, even if they miss out. If they go nine, and eight, whatever the case might be, there has to be some progress seen with this Jets team. Otherwise, people are going to be asking for changes. No, yeah. Just so you know, I agree with you. I'm just yeah. saying there is the ultimate side of like this is yeah. a gradual progression thing, yeah, and you are sure. technically yeah. and you are technically ahead of schedule, and you lucked out yeah. with schedule, and like yeah. this is just you know, yeah. it it does it does take time, and unfortunately, you got your you know, I if I remember, you, you know, you had the Gase era, like which put yourself in such a negative, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of negative in the Jets world, but hopefully, there's positive going forward for them. Like, you know, like us Giants fans, we have the positive yeah. going forward now. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll discuss more about your, uh, your that's quarter. where and your that's quarter. where yeah. a uh, yeah. that's where a first round, a couple first round picks would be worth it for the Jets to give up because this is the time now for it. But we know how uh, tough it gets. But you got to do it as soon as you can. 49ers went from uh, the second worst team in the league to the Super Bowl two years ago, uh, three years ago. I should four, sorry, four years ago. So it can be done, but it proves that you have to do it right away when you have the opportunity to and don't wait. Not worth it there. But as we mentioned with the Giants quarterback situation, we know the story right here. Daniel Jones has his best year of his career, even though statistically it's mediocre. He did make strides and it led to wins. So here's the big question coming into this offseason right now. Do the Jet? do the uh, Giants – pay the uh, salary demands that have been allegedly reported where Daniel Jones is asking for 45 million a year or do they uh... <laughs> oh I'm I'm going to I'm going to get into this cuz I, I I have to get into this one right here all right I mean and wait wait just one thing yeah, and yeah. the other option is uh franchise tagging him for the single season get around between 30 to 33 45. million a year and then try to uh bounce that off and uh try to even it out with the uh rest of the salary cap and um, remember, Saquon Barkley is a, looks like he is going into free agency. The Giants offered him a contract, which he allegedly declined. Uh, and, um, you know, they, there's all these things they have to consider while the team is ahead of schedule. My one thing to say before you go, Hayden, when it terms to – I personally think the Giants should tag him, give him a one more quote-unquote prove-it year since they didn't extend his fifth-year option. I think that's the way they should go. But – I wouldn't be upset if they paid him $45 million a year because that is no. the market value of starting quarterbacks right now who have given, who have made success to earn a second contract. If Kyler Murray can get paid $44 million a year, not make a playoffs, not make the playoffs yet, or sorry, not make the playoffs the year. Um, last year, he made the playoffs one for one season, and he lost that playoff game. Why can't Daniel Jones be worth the same thing? And he's won a playoff game as well. That's the one comparison I will go on from there. Does he deserve the $45 million a year? I say yes because of the market value set by starting quarterbacks in this league who have earned the spot to at least make it to another contract. And that money is based off us pouring our hearts and souls in the NFL. We can't get mad at these players' salaries because we go into their product every single week. It's not our money. It's not affecting us. So I think if the Giants were to hit those demands and pay him that much money, I personally wouldn't have a problem with it because, again, of the market value set by those quarterbacks. Um, I guess I'll get into that again. I, I personally think paying him $45 million a year, I think you'd have to be on crack to pay him that much money. And I'll tell you <laughs> a little bit why. 
Um, his franchise, his career year is 3,200 yards, 15 touchdowns, five picks, and 700 yards rushing. That means he accounted for about 3,900 total yards in a career year. Like, that was the best year of his career. I mean, I understand, like, he's he, – he did a lot with a little. I agree, I agree with that. And I also think you have to also look at the quarterback comparisons in the AFC versus the NFC where there's only – where Daniel Jones would be about the second or third best quarterback in the in the NFC right now because there's really no one that I can honestly say is definitively better besides Jalen Hurts than Daniel Jones so much better. But right. that being said, also like you got to look at him in comparison to like Derek Carr, or other guys in the market. He doesn't have one quality where I could say, boy, he's like amazing at this. He doesn't have the arm strength. He doesn't have like an insanely great arm. He's pretty accurate. He's not like accuracy like Drew Brees. He doesn't have the huge passing statistics. I mean, if you're looking at Derek Carr, Derek Carr has thrown for 4,000 yards in four of the past, past five seasons. He has a 91.8 passer rating. Uh, Lamar Jackson has the fourth best winning percentage of all time. He has an MVP when he's looking at a trade deal. Jimmy Garoppolo has a 40-17 and 17 record and has played in the Super Bowl. Like, what are you telling me that Daniel Jones does so great that he warrants that type of money? And, like, Geno Smith also. Like, Geno Smith, I looked at um, the market valuation for Geno Smith. Uh, the average salary right now that he is in line for was 39.3. 39.3 million per year for – I looked at it in terms of there was a salary and market valuation tax. So, I do not believe Daniel Jones is worth $45 million. $35 million, I, I'm with it. I think he's worth in anywhere from the $35 million to the $40 million range. He does – he is worth getting, getting back in another year or two because that being said, the NFC right now – is in quarterback purgatory. You don't necessarily have the quarterbacks in the AFC like Trevor Lawrence, Joe Burrow, Mahomes, Hurt, Mahomes not Hurts. Uh, Tro- Trevor Lawrence, Mahomes, Burrow, um, Justin Herbert. Um, if Lamar stays in there, like there's just the, the discrepancy between quarterbacks and Josh Allen too. The discrepancy in quarterbacks between the AFC and the NFC. He's, he would be like the seventh or eighth best quarterback in the AFC, whereas he is in the NFC right now, which, you know, he – He's competing to be the second or third best quarterback in the NFC right now because I don't feel like Dak Prescott or Kirk Cousins or Jared Goff, any of those guys are so much better than Daniel Jones. Uh, also, Brock Purdy is still kind of relatively unproven. He got hurt in that NFC Championship game. So it, it really depends. Like, I feel like the best thing to do would be franchise tag him, give him another two or three years, and let it play out and see if maybe he can take that de- development to be the second best quarterback and he can overtake Kirk Cousins and Dak Prescott and other quarterbacks in the NFC, but giving him $45 million for for what his statistics show and what he has overall proven in the league would be insanity to me. Um, I'll let other people, I'll let other people give the floor, but that's just my take on, on Daniel Jones. Yeah. So uh, for me, like, I think there's two options. I think there is the free agency route of you can't pay him 45 million. It makes no sense. He's not worth it. I agree with you completely. Go after a guy like Derek Carr. You franchise tag, tag Saquon, and then you use that, you know, twenty uh, mid twenty pick, and you get the Ohio State wide receiver, and you're already upgrading your offense. You know, um, I don't see Daniel Jones as a premier guy. I think he had a good season because of the system that he was in, and that he relied on a good Saquon running season. Um, yep. When there is no run game, he gets shut down, and if his run legs get shut down, then the entire offense is completely fucked. So I think a guy like Derek Carr would make sense. I think even a guy like Jimmy Garoppolo would make sense. Um, I also think this option, too, is this is Dable's team. He wants a quarterback that he drafted. I think they might look to move up in the draft and draft a quarterback. And then, yeah, and then get a guy like an Andy Dalton who could just be a bridge guy um, for for them. And, you know, because they were ahead of schedule in the playoffs. And I, I think that average quarterback play will get them into the playoffs again this season just because of how weak the NFC is. So I don't think Daniel Jones is the answer unless you get him on a franchise tag or a short-term deal that is not that much money. Because in my eyes, he's a $25 million quarterback. I see nothing oh, no, special I think, I think he's him. worth a little bit more than that in the NFC. Considering, all right, yeah, all considering, right, considering, the, NFC, considering the, the competition. 30. To, yeah, to the, 30. To the, to the AFC, I feel like. Yeah, I'll give, him the extra five mil, I'll give him the extra $5 million because he's a quarter of a running back. <laughs> then he could run a little bit, so I'll get him a little extra $5 million for that. But, like, he's nothing crazy. There's better options out there. Upgrade your team. Go for Derek Carr. Yeah, uh, as as a, as a Giants fan, I would love to have him back. But when I saw the report of forty five million dollars, I almost lost my damn mind. Um, and I, I don't I don't know for sure if it's there's certain things coming out because he changed agencies and was that a leak from the agency to make him look bad? Who knows? I, I don't really know the case, but forty five 
no way. Uh, I'm just looking at quarterback contracts, and I, that's how I kind of gauge it, right? So, um, you know, Dak's getting forty million, Matt Stafford's getting forty million, Josh Allen forty three, Patrick Mahomes is getting forty five. David Jones is the Patrick Mahomes. I'm sorry. I love him. He's he's a hell of a, a quarterback. I think he'd be great in our system going forward, but I'm not paying him Patrick Mahomes' money. And like, I was sorry, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say real quick something, but what were you gonna say? I, uh, know, you, you, okay. you know, yeah. I was just gonna say, like, for me, looking at the quarterback contracts real quick, like I see Kirk Cousins at 35 million, Jared Goff at 33. Like I think Dak fall or not like you look at Dak and then like you go kind of below there, and I think Daniel's kind of below that. I think he's Kirk Cousins' money or Jared Goff money, anywhere between, like, 33 to 35, if you can get him lower at 32. But there's no way I'm paying $45 million for Daniel Jones. Like I said, I love him, but his stats don't back it up. He's not on Mahomes. I feel more comfortable if we give him 32 or whatever, or even 35 yeah, on a short-term deal. Like yeah, like, or franchise. If you can't do anything franchise having for the year and have him prove it again, go for it. But if you're going to give him a, a short-term extension, I think the max I, I feel comfortable with is going 32. He's not a $45 million quarterback. I would much rather like Brian say, go after Derek Carr, go after Jimmy Garoppolo, somehow keep Saquon, and go from there, and and, and stuff like that. Like, there's if Jones wants $45 million, good luck. I don't think anyone's going to give him $45 million. I don't think any team's he going to give him $45 million. Too, He doesn't – Go ahead. Too, with, like, Daniel Jones, too. Like, I, I have to admit, like, I, I'm saying this as, like, a, a football guy, like – he is very, very good as, like, a leadership guy. Like, I, yeah. I, I love his leadership and, like, his intangibles there. Like, I actually love Daniel Jones personally. Like, the toughness. Like, everything about him in terms of, like, the non-football stuff, like, the, the intangibles, everything else, I actually feel like it's pretty great. Like, yeah. he's a great I mean, leader great. and everything. But yeah. that being said, like, there comes a point where you but, have to be great at one type of thing. Yeah. You have to be great at something to really want yeah. the type of I was going to say, are you, are, is, is his leadership worth $10 million more? No. Oh, no, 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 no. 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 No, no, no. The thing is, like, I'm just, I just can't see from a logistical standpoint, from a money standpoint, I don't see how he even has leverage to claim anything beyond two franchise tags. Like, the the Giants have the full upper hand here because they recognize and understand that Dayball is the infrastructure moving Mm -hmm. forward. He's the guy who's going to set the table. And if anything, like we've all alluded to, and I've said a couple times during this season, is that he wants his guy, whether it's Two years from now or it's a year from now, he's going to get his guy, and that that's just going to be the end of it. So I think that all, all the all the bidding and purchasing powers in the Giants' possession, I think that Daniel Jones is, very, is frankly lucky to have another season to prove himself because he had a great, what, three quarters of a season, and they were able to string off a win against the Vikings. Like, yeah, okay, great. And, like, he put and the wheel He played all up. those games, too, didn't get hurt. Yeah, they got hurt. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and they were fortunate with the schedule they had, too. So I, I just – I, I don't I don't see the purchasing power that he, he may think he commands. I think a lot of this is just kind of, you know, posturing, you know, on on behalf of himself and his new agency. I just think that um, this is kind of the normal kind of expectation with quarterbacks and their ego going forward. You're going to see a lot of this across the league. And 45 is just kind of a lofty proposition because, of course, anybody with two brain cells rubs together knows that he's not Pat Mahomes at a minimum. So. I just wonder how this agency athletes first is going to show <laughs> how good they are. I mean, they got the Deshaun Watson contract settled after the disturbing allegations against him. There must be something to this. They but, got Aaron Rodgers, his contract. This is a very good agency. But so but with Watson, out. people forget as all, some of the stuff he did on the field. Obviously, we all know what he did. He was like arguably a top 10 quarterback when – he played five top five top five, top five. It, 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 five. Bad top, like i would say yeah top five yeah and the, the browns were desperate to yeah. uh give him despite the allegations all against him yeah. and that's just how Be- some yeah. good agents because they valued well. him as a, as a top five quarterback i don't think anyone in the league and i'm sorry like i said i love daniel i don't think anyone in the league is valuing daniel jones as a top five or top ten quarterback that, and Interesting. That's, that's what i agree that. He, he 15, 15, you could say maybe this year, just what he did. I, and like I said, I, I he completely changed my opinion on him. But like I said, just because he had one great season of 15 touchdowns and you know and almost a thousand yards rushing, it wasn't a great it's season. not, it it's, was, yeah, it's not 45 million dollars. It was more the team won, not exactly. More it, the exactly. If you don't, yeah. if you don't throw 3,500 passing yards in today's NFL, I'm sorry, but you're not a quarterback. You're a glorified H <laughs> back who knows how to hey, do play Derek action. Had, yeah. 
<laughs> you're Derrick Henry. You, you, you know, you know who you are. You're Don Terry Poe on a dime. That's who you are. Okay. I don't. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it about. Oh, you know, he's good. He's a top fifteen. He threw thirty two hundred passing yards, and he didn't have a thousand rushing yards. That's the only time and when that's okay. Fifteen touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, the yeah, only fi- fifteen it's, touchdowns. Like, they're like, always uh, in, like I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, like like it's like Evan, Ingr- Ingr- Evan, Ingr- Evan Ingram effect, where every every commentator are like, "Oh, look at Evan Ingram. Well, he's he's going to be yeah. a top five tight end in the league. He's unbelievable." When he was on the Giants, everyone was like, "Do you not like, see uh, the same like, player?" Even, on the here's here's my hot take. Let me do quick. Here's my hot take. Ready? A guy like Brian Dable took a nutcase wild card in Josh Allen and tamed him and made him into a good quarterback. And now he's starting to unravel. I can't believe I'm going to say this. Who's a guy in the NFL that has amazing potential arm talent, a little bit of a turnover problem, and lost his chance at a starting job last year? James Winston. James Winston. <laughs> I bet Brian Dable would make him into an all pro. I wouldn't I, I wouldn't say no to that. I wouldn't hate and James Winston. I honestly wouldn't. I wouldn't I would say, I wouldn't only re- it. I he, he lost his starting job last yep. year because he almost like literally died from a, like a, a spinal yeah. injury. So like that man might come back next year and that be on the cheap. Th- didn't he try to play through that injury too? Like he had like yeah, he three did. broken and ribs and a back injury and like a knee. And they gave him an adult. Yeah. It's a shame like, though. It's a shame uh, because he would have been very good this year. But like like that offense with Dable doesn't need a top quarterback. It doesn't. It no. doesn't. It just needs consistency, consistency yeah. and it needs a deep threat ability. And that's like, not um, that both yeah. both of those things. Daniel Jones doesn't have. I mean, well, he has a deep arm. Like, he does. Um, but... Geno Smith's like career year to like Daniel Jones. Like Geno Smith, at least threw for forty two hundred yards. He had thirty touchdowns. Like in comparison yeah. to like Daniel Jones's career year, and he had a hundred point nine passer rating. So it's like it's just completely different. Like. You got to pay Gino after what he did last year. Like, oh, for sure, yeah. Is is my is year warrants you paying him that much because he put up insanely good numbers and it was comeback player of the year, and he Which had, I don't, and he also I don't rushed agree for three hundred sixty six yards. So like he, in total, he he uh he had about sixty, he had about four thousand six forty yards in terms of total yards in comparison to Daniel Jones, he had about. 700 total yards more, which is like I, I I love Gino, but we gotta we gotta stop the comeback player of the year award being for like a player who was a dud for a few years and then having a great season. I mean, season. he did he he. Uh, I love Gino. Starter was 2014, but, so like, but it, comeback player of the year should always be someone who overcome an injury. That's that's just my opinion, and I'm not trying to be like Brian Robinson got shot, had I still had a season. Yeah, no, Nick Gates leg almost amputated, wasn't even a nominee. Like. For the Giants, like I, I, I love Geno story. Yeah, it, it definitely should have been Brian. Definitely should have been Brian. But either should have been Robinson or Nick Gates. Both two players. One Brian Robinson almost died, and Nick Gates, who almost got his leg amputated, should have both been in the standings for comeback player of the year. They weren't. McCaffrey, you could say the same for Christian McCaffrey because he I mean, what, like, like, yeah, like it just. I think it should be an injury specific award. That's just a random tangent because I know Geno won comeback player of the year, and everyone's looking at him, and it's a great story. But like. We need to get that award back for players who have overcome a traumatic event and or a serious injury, not because you were done for three years and then finally turned it around for the Seahawks. As much as I love Gino and as much as a great story it is, that's just my little side rant there on Gino. But he does deserve to get paid. I want him to get paid. He definitely deserves it. For the remaining teams who need a quarterback left before we just ref- actually reflect on the next year in the quote-unquote wrap-up portion of this wrap-up show, whether you are the Saints, the Colts, um, Ravens potentially, uh, Raiders potentially, Dallas uh, Cowboys, Houston, Houston. Commanders, <laughs> Commanders are going with Command- Sam Howell, and uh, and the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going with Trask, but they they're going to be looking for quarterbacks as well. Carolina, Carolina too, if they don't stick with Darnold. Where do you, which team do you want to see? Which team beside out of all the teams we just mentioned? Who is going to be able to pull off having a brand new quarterback? Sorry, let me re- let me restate that. Which team is going to have their franchise quarterback next season, and who is that quarterback going to be? Out of all the ones we mentioned, um, what does that include rookies? I think it's going to be Frank yeah, Reich's yeah. Frank Reich's Carolina Panthers, and I think. That they're poised. They have an all-star coaching staff right now. The defense is young. They have weapons on the offense. If they're able to sign back Deontay Foreman, who in ha- if he only had 
30% of the snaps in the first half of the season and then 70% of the snaps in the later half of the season, if he matched 70% in the beginning of the season, he would have averaged 1,800 rushing yards this season instead of 914. They literally did the analytics on that and would have blown out, you know, the number one rushing leader this year. So he's a key to that. I think they're going to draft. They're going to trade up. And I think they're going to go after like a CJ Stroud or a Bryce Young. And with Reich, I think it could work. Um, or I mean, or they go wild card and they get an Anthony Richardson and they keep low in their pick and they make it work like an old, like a Cam Newton kind of player. For me, the team that I think is going to be in the market for a quarterback and I feel like will ultimately get their franchise guy, not the stopgap guy, is going to be Indianapolis Colts. I think the Colts are going to go draft the guy like um, Will Levis or one of those quarterbacks in the top or they're going to try to trade for C.J. Stroud. And uh, we're going to see the Colts get their, their franchise guy in the draft this year. And That's you think, think that they can, them. they're going to be the ones to trade with Chicago? If, yes. If I anyone, think, they're going to be the ones um, to do either, it. I think either them or Tennessee are going to be the two teams. Hmm. I think Houston is going to actually move up to one because they're afraid of anyone else that's going to leapfrog them. And I think they're going to get their guy. I mean, they're they, gonna, they're probably gonna at the it. end, they're going to get the lesser of two people. Well, not lesser of two, lesser of two great quarterback decisions, either between Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud. Me personally, just from seeing him, I'm saying C.J. Stroud is the best quarterback in this class. I think anyone that drafts him is landing their franchise guy. I think Houston hopefully will land him. But if Chicago moves down, I think the Colts are going to jump up. I wouldn't be surprised if Seattle even jumps up or Las Vegas. But – I think whoever lands C.J. Stroud, and like I said, I think it'll be Houston somehow. If they either sit or they move up to get him, I think they'll have their franchise guy. I was huge on C.J. Stroud even throughout this year, but then once I saw him play Georgia in the playoff, I was completely sold on him, and no one's talking about him. I mean, they're hyping him up, but not to the level I think people are. I think people think Bryce Young is the clear-cut guy. I think it's going to be C.J. Stroud. So I think any team that lands C.J. Stroud is going to have their franchise guy. Um, I would look out for this guy in the later, like the third or fourth round. It's supposed to be going to be really good. Two guys I think that you guys should take a look at. Uh, Clayton Toon from the University of Houston. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said he's been unbelievable for the University of Houston, put up big numbers. He's a quarterback in the later rounds. And him and Hendon Hooker are the two guys where I feel like people should look at those guys who could be franchise guys. Hendon Hooker should could have probably should have won the Heisman last year had he not got hurt. Yeah. Um. So okay. those are two guys later in the draft that I feel like could be like potential stars in the draft, like a Dak Prescott or Andy Dalton, but they were drafted in like the third or fourth round. It could become franchise guys. So if we're just talking like the conversation to grade, like um, the franchises that are actually going to acquire their guy to take more of the top, whether it's the draft or in trade, I would say that the two that I'm looking at, honestly, are the Jets, New Orleans. And the reason being is because I feel like New Orleans is basically playing with house money. The division's wide open. There's no competition there besides Carolina, but I don't think Carolina has the brains in the organization yet to really make that correct move. Um, I still think they're kind of just shooting from the hip. I think that New Orleans, whether they get Carr or they get Aaron, or, I mean, hell, if they even move up, if they have to, I think that they're in the the, the catbird seat right now um, in that division. And I think that the AFC East, I mean, while it's highly competitive, I still think that – keeping up with the Joneses is kind of the trademark for Joe Douglas to especially make the playoffs this year. So I think that they're going to land Carr, Um, And I think that those are probably the two moves that are really going to um, shake up most of the league this year. Who do you think the Falcons are going to take? Cause I feel like the Falcons are one of the teams where like, no one really kind of knows what they're going to do with Desmond Rear. Like nobody really knows their quarterback situation right now. Definitely not Marcus Mariota. I mean, they a good one. I mean, no, they, Mario is gone. He like quit on the team. Be, he, he quit on the team. He's gone. Four, yeah. They could be. They could be in the market for a guy like Anthony, Anthony Richardson, or one of those guys where they could maybe sneak up and take like a Levis or one of those quarterbacks. Like they could be look, market them. I would not be shocked if they, if they, uh, if they t- took a quarterback in this. Draft. I mean, they're 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 eight. I could see them making a move to even go up to one potentially with the Bears. I mean, I, they would yeah, have to give up a good uh, amount. But if I they have don't heard Ritter, they may yeah. potentially try and trade for Lamar. I have heard that rumor too. I, yeah, I, could exactly. also see, I, I could see Lamar. I could also see like with that pick, with that pick going after an Anthony Richardson. Um, I could also see them, you know, trying to just, you know, bring back Matt Ryan, Matt Ryan for a one year veteran deal just as a leader standpoint and develop Riddler, Riddler a little more because Ritter, I mean, because I really don't think he developed under Mariota. 
I don't think Mariota helped him out and was a little selfish, no. and then he completely yeah. gave up. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at reports right now, and it says they're they're very happy with Desmurder and de- his development, so they probably yeah. could they could go well, with him next year. But I like, think you go can you yeah. can ask a you can ask a quarterback from Cincinnati to do well in his first year. It's hard. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I agree. Sorry, Alex. I was gonna say I think they need to bring if the Falcons are gonna do anything. I think if they bring in like a veteran that might not push Ritter out, but if they have him, but like the veterans that we know that help quarterbacks, their their fellow teammates, nope. they, that's what Ritter needs going forward. That's but the what reason, I think. reason the reason I mentioned the Giants in free agency is because I don't think that they have the same. I, I see them in the, in the exact same vein as like as Atlanta, but like Atlanta being a year behind the Giants. I believe that much in Arthur Smith. I see him the similar vein as like Dayball in terms of being able to galvanize and lead an organization. And I feel that if there's something that he's going to resort back to um, is like what he was familiar with in Tennessee, I think that he's going to go back to resorting to a pocket guy. And if that means Rizzer, Ritter uh, resembles that, then he's just going to develop that. For sure. Like, I, I feel like what you were talking about, Andy Dalton, I feel like Andy Dalton would be a good spot in Tampa, too, because they also want to they also want to develop um, sure. Kyle Trask. Red Rock? Yeah. Like, like what, what you're talking about with Andy Dalton, that wouldn't be such a bad move for him. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think a lot of these teams that drafted young guys that, you know, they hope to develop, they really need that one actual veteran that wants to be there to help them. I mean, I, the perfect example to me is like Alex Smith with Mahomes, right? He yeah, was there that year. He knew – he saw the writing on the wall. He knew what was happening. And unlike Mariota – he stuck there. He, he learned. He helped Mahomes learn every day, and like that's why we see what Mahomes is. And we'll know when Mahomes gets in the Hall of Fame, which y'all know is going to happen. Whenever he retires, he will credit Alex Smith for being able to get adjusted to the NFL because of how he took him under his wing. So I think a lot of teams like the Falcons with Ritter, they bring in that Dalton type guy, someone who we all know, you know, is fine holding like the clipboard like and training, Brissett. or Jacoby Brissett, like a person we know who loves holding the clipboard and loves teaching. The, you know, these guys will be fine. And like I said, the Falcons, that they like Ritter, I think they'll try to bring in that veteran that will do that. will help maximize his potential and teach him every single day. Mm-hmm. And listen, you know how I feel about Jacoby Brissett. I think he got a fucking blackballed in the Browns for the rest of that season. I think they would have been a playoff team if he yeah, remained no. the starter the rest mm-hmm. of that season. I agree. So, with that. You, you know, um, I really think that he should be an option, not even as a bridge guy, but as a starter. He showed it in the Colts with a with a lackluster offense and defense at the time before they started getting their key pieces. And he just is a PS composure. So, you know, for teams like this, I could see them, you know, like Atlanta, like a Houston being the being a guy that could be there for two years um, and help develop a quarterback. All right. Good stuff, gentlemen, on this one. So let's talk about the season as a whole really quick and truly wrap up the uh, season we just witnessed. I'm just going to ask a simple question. I just want you both, you all, and we'll let the conversation flow from there. Tell me your favorite and least favorite part of the season as a whole. And one thing I will admit, admit, is... uh, the DeMar Hamlin situation, I think, should be everybody's least favorite part of this season. And luckily, that's over. Luckily, DeMar Hamlin is alive and well and recovering. And um, we learn our lessons from that horrific situation. Mm-hmm. But we don't have to mention that as your least favorite part because that's obvious for any kind souled people here. But tell me about your least favorite and favorite part of the season. And for me, obviously, seeing the Giants go to the playoffs this year and win a playoff game against the Minnesota Vikings on the road. Literally that one Sunday in the the second Sunday in January. Well, that game play was played on Saturday. Um, No, it was played Sunday. Sorry. The Saturday was the Eagles game. So on that second Sunday in January, um, everything was just all right in the world, truly lived in the moment. And uh, we had a lot of momentum going into that. And, uh, Obviously, things change, but the future is bright. How can that not be my favorite um, moment of this season? And my least favorite part of this season was just seeing those Eagles beat us three different times and even being accused of being an Eagles fan by our trolls in that one video. It was a tough pill to swallow. Every single one, it seemed the losses got worse and worse. Even though that uh, final game of the season, we put up a fight with our backups against their ones. But um, and they did cover that day, 
and, and ultimately uh, Giants related for me. But um, hopefully we can at least get w- at least one win against the Eagles next year on our way to a deeper playoff run. Those are some great highs and lows right there, Matt. Um, for me, I think my low and what I'm least uh, happy about is the regression in Dak Prescott after paying him and seeing him come back and fight through that injury. Um, it looks, though, to see that it might just be a combination of a lackluster offensive scheme and Kellen Moore and some aging players on the offense and, you know, losing Amari Cooper. Yeah, you know, losing Amari Cooper to trade, which is the biggest mistake we made the entire season. Um, and I think my greatest high, in my opinion, is um, I would say besides DeMar Ham- Hamlin, obviously, um, I'm happy for Jared Goff getting the, his roses and the credit he deserves for actually playing well as the starting quarterback for the Detroit Lions. And just the Detroit Lions, um, you know, getting better, coming together and really, you know, unifying under Dan Campbell and making good. You know, branching off of that one with the uh, Dak Prescott, you're officially want to go on the record saying you have no hope for him. He is going to be a loser for the rest of his time on the Cowboys. Oh. Do you want to confirm that, Brian? Um, no, I think he has hope. I just think he, you know, Brian Schoen, Brian Schoenheimer, uh, Schoenheim, uh, or Schoenheimer, I forget the OC, the new one. He's capable. McCarthy's a good OC in play calling. I, I, I want to see what happens here. But this is the make it or break it year. If he does nothing, like, he's gone. So I'm upset that he regressed, but it could be a lot of factors. You know, everyone has bad turnover years in the NFL. Tony Romo did. He had some good years. So we just have to see what happens. And uh, I don't think the ruling's out yet, but, like, you know, the book might get closed soon. And putting this to the floor for everybody here, Brian made a great point. Jared Goff got some respect this season and almost willed the Lions to a playoff spot. But um, after a very – it could be as bad as it got for the start of the season. What were they, 2-8, and 2-9 and nine to start the season? 1-7. One 1-7. One one yeah. The – um. There you go. And they were somehow able to uh, play competitive games in December. So the Lions future ahead, do we see them progressing with this momentum with golf? Um, I do actually. I feel, like mm-hmm. year, yeah. I feel like next year, Lions will be a playoff team. They have a really good roster. They have a very good quarterback right now, Jared Goff. Can I go on a limb? I think this is actually going to be a two, uh, two team division between Minnesota and Detroit moving forward. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, that's how I see this. Uh, and, then, and then, again, that's with Aaron uh, staying or leaving. I just think that either that's or. Yep, and I think that even if you know, even if Minnesota is the median in that division, I think that Detroit has a really bright future. Uh, yeah, uh, Matt, it was actually one and six. They started off one and six. Okay, one and six. There you go. I, but I, anyways, yeah, a bad I agree, start. I agree, Detroit. I, I agree. Detroit has a very bright future um, as well. I, I think they have a, a nice core there. Goff's playing really well. I love their head coach. So I think they get a few more additions to this team through the draft and in this offseason. I think they're a team to look out for for sure. Um and then I guess for my high, my high for the season would probably be Geno Smith coming back. Um, that was a great, great story. He's been out of the league for 10 years. Now he's a pro bowler. Um, my least my least favorite part of the season obviously would be the Jets mm-hmm. collapsing. And I was unfortunately at the Jets Patriots game in Ooh. Oxburgh when they took the <laughs> touchdown and Sorry. I was going to jump off a building, so it was that was, probably, that was the worst game, probably the worst game I've ever been to in my entire life. And I say every oh. game is the worst after the Jets because I say that like at the end of the game, <laughs> that was actually the worst. Like I can't remember a game that bad in my life. Um, trying to, my high is like Matt. Same thing here. Uh, Giants getting back in the playoffs, being at a lot of games this year, finally rewarding to actually stay in the stands and uh, watch Giants football. So that was my high. Uh, and then also with the Giants playoff win, it was a good week for me because I'm pretty sure Georgia won the week prior, and, and I was all on a high yeah. on that. And then the Giants, you know, <laughs> go on. Uh, which I am wearing my Georgia. This is I need to get their back to back. This is the 2021 shirt. Um, yeah, I'm trying to least favorite moment. It's kind of a, a, a cluster, I guess, of things, but uh, just just officiating, I guess, as a whole has been a lot of my least favorite. Moments this year, I think there was, especially when it comes to roughing the passer calls. I'm going to say oh a moment is the oh my god, that call on John Franklin Myers, yeah, versus like, the Patriots. It's just 
yeah, I'm gonna say least favorite moment, egregious Rafi the Patrick. Ball. That's how I'm gonna Rafi simplify Rafi. all this. It there was the game. There was so many game changing, awful Rafi the Passer calls this season compared to years prior. I don't know why, but you know, like Hayden said, the Jets game cost them that game. There's other things down the line. We all agreed like certain things with roughing the passer or holding or things like that. There was just a lot of lot of crazy calls where you see replay or I'll see on Twitter and like, did the refs get this right? And it'll be some little simple toss down of a quarterback and they threw a flag for roughing the passer. It's just it, there's um, something terrible. Falcons I, got screwed this year. I, I think, also too. didn't necessarily yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Fal- Falcons got screwed. Uh, on the Tom Brady got sacked and he just like brought him down nicely and like I don't know what he did. Brady even ended up kicking him or something and then he, yeah. they threw a flag on the guy who sacked him. It was just a mess this year. So that was probably my least favorite moments. Where as we were supposed to get excited for sacks, I felt there was a lot of times this year where we'd have to wait three or four seconds after the sack happened to make sure that there wasn't a rough in the passer call this year. So. <laughs> Like I said, favorite moment, Giants playoff run, their playoff win. It was amazing. I had so much fun watching the Giants season. Least favorite moment, egregious roughing the passer calls. I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, highlight of the year for me, because you guys know how I feel. Um, <laughs> Josh Jacobs with a not only all pro, but breaking mm-hmm. every goddamn Raider record ever made besides, uh, you know, even usurping Bo Jackson. So shout out to him. I thought he played his ass off, even injured for the second half of the season. Um, and low point of the year, it's a 20-way tie between every call that McDaniels has made on third down yeah. and fourth. Probably about a 25-way tie. So, yeah. Jeez. What did you guys <laughs> get the most out of this season? What? <laughs> What did you get the most out of this season as a whole? Um, what did you learn? What did you learn that the refs are hopeless <laughs> or might never give up on my team because anything can happen? The uh, thing I got Tom the Brady most... is human. What did you get the most out of this season? I got the most is that you really need a quarterback. Like it, it, you can never have too many quarterbacks. That's what that's what I, I learned really this uh, year. I, I learned not to make too many unrealistic parlays. I think that was my <laughs> my learn this year. Or uh Try so to keep the legs short. Like, you know, I, I was going Never for bet like on the five, Jets. six, six I legs here. I, I need to trip it down because, like, I was looking at my statistics and I usually get, like, four out of five right. So I'm like, why didn't I just do a four leg? And I would have been in the money. But then I had to go for the one extra one. So, yeah. Uh, so if you gamble, be smart about it. I, oh. That was a big lesson for me. And, uh, yeah, just don't – I think another lesson for me is just not get – don't get too frustrated while being a fan like giants are definitely a lot of frustrating moments but i was just it was nice to just calm down and be like okay we still have a shot it's not all over yet i wasn't miserable come you know thanksgiving uh i was actually excited for the season so don't take things too seriously when it comes to your team i learned i learned that um just like brady and everybody else you can never please your wife and (laughs) um (laughs) and i learned that shots fired and i learned if you have uh (laughs) Brett Maher on extra points, you might as well be uh, singing a Stevie Wonder. So, yeah. <laughs> too, too far. That still hurts. Oh, that was right. That was a highlight of that live stream, though, was all of our and reactions. We still, and, we still won, and, and we still won, though. And we still won. won. I, I, I also, I also learned amazing. that uh, that no mother is safe from Zach Wilson. So, it's nice. <laughs> nice. Oh, shout out. Shout out to Hayden that. now. Oh. Alex, by the way, I, oh. I, I know what you mean, A. Young, on that. I always the perfect number is always four for like for me, but yeah, it's it's painful. Like the just unrelated, real quick college basketball Saturday. Um, I hit a, I hit one. Well, well, here's the one that killed me. I picked the spreads on on Florida Athletic hit at eleven and a half. Georgia Tech minus six and a half. Merrimack, who's terrible, minus twelve and a half. Merrimack at the the, um, they're in the uh, top of the uh... sorry. Northeast Conference. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Beat the terrible LIU team. Who oh, can't LIU is awful. That's LIU what I meant. Horrible, yeah. But <laughs> I picked Michigan State, who was up by nine. They were plus uh, five oh. and a half with a minute 30 left. They <laughs> go to overtime, they blow it, and they lose by six. Oh, Ooh. my God. Bad like, beat. Bad. I don't even – that beat. that I that was, a, that was a tough lesson. That was real bad. Like, Did, that Arizona, was as bad Arizona as it got. Arizona State game winner. Yeah, beautiful, awesome buzzer beater on that one. So that um, it kills you, man. It really kills you. That Michigan State, I just, uh, I'm never betting for them again. Yeah, 
Stay away from him for a little bit. You got it. Yeah, and stay away from Zach Wilson's mom because I'll be over there all weekend. So. But, um, <laughs> bumps. Oh man! And hey, how about this? We're Tom Brady. And ultimately, if you told him, Tom Brady, if you stay one more year, you will lose in the playoffs. And um, yeah, we saw Tom Brady at the end, and he could have ended on top. And then, uh, I mean, what do we get ultimately at the end of the day, seeing Tom Brady's final season where he was just an old 45-year-old Tom Brady? You know, the best, the best, he was a wrestling reference. When you saw the Undertaker wrestling matches at 55, he was Mark Calloway, not the Undertaker. Yeah. This time yeah. he, we saw Tom Brady at 45. He's just Thomas Brady out there at 45 playing. Yeah, I mean it wasn't a complete disaster uh, of a of a last yeah, season. Yeah, it could have been worse. It could have been way worse. We could have seen him just fall off a cliff, but it wasn't the Tom Brady that we knew. But I'm happy he packed it in. We all know what he is to this game. We all. We'll probably all agree he's the greatest quarterback we've ever seen. Yeah, as much as you like him or hate him, but of our generation, at least, he's the greatest quarterback. Sobbing in the locker room by himself because of the because of the. But I mean, I'm also I'm also with him too. It was tough. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of weird. Like usually, some legends like him or others, they kind of announce it so they can get their swan songs at their respective stadiums. I, I like that he didn't go that route. He kind of kept it in question on if he was going to come back or not, similar to like what Eli Manning did. But we all kind of saw the writing on the wall with Eli. You know, those one of the last home games, he got a standing ovation and all that stuff. We kind of knew he was going to pack it in. Um, with Brady, I was, I, was, I was happy that he didn't go like, oh, I need a gift for every game and everyone needs to celebrate me. Uh, you know, it, it, we got to yeah. see Brady be Brady at times, but also he was a 45-year-old man that I think we all saw that, you know, this was it for him. Uh, the team, you know, wasn't a Super Bowl team, but he did the best he could. Had one last ride, and uh, you know, he has you know millions of dollars waiting for him over at Fox. Whenever he you know decides to step into the booth, I think he's taking this year off, and then he'll he'll finally you know make his way back to football. I really think he's going to back out of that deal. I really I just, think somehow, some way, I could I could see him do that too. But I mean, that's a lot of money to back away from, and you only have to travel here and there every once in a while, and you're making I don't even know how much it was per year, but three hundred seventy-five we'll million. Okay, there it is. From Fox. So. Will Tom Brady win Giselle Bunchin back? That is that's negative. That's his, his, negative chance. That's his off. That's his off season objective. That's what he has it's, to do now. I don't think it's a negative chance. I think he's got a chance. He could be <laughs> pussy for month for for years. Oh, doesn't he have a new girlfriend anyway? So yeah, maybe. No, not. it was. I think it was confirmed that girl who was posing. She just Veronica was crazy. Rejek or whatever. I thought yeah, she was, was just crazy. It's just posing. Oh. It just. She was just crazy. She was just a fan girl. Okay. Okay. Nothing wrong with her. Though. Listen, she's, she's in Corneville right now, having the time of her life. Not thinking of Tom. No. Yep. I believe in Tom Brady. I want to be on the record for that. He will win Giselle Bunchin back. And um. Why would you? Why would you? She got because Egon's Tom here. Brady is just something different. But and it'll be a documentary. She passed the point of childbearing. She's diminishing returns. We're gonna oh. we're gonna we're gonna get to 30 for 30. Win, winning her back. The Tom he just Brady likes Giselle her story. for who she is. <laughs> Maybe when you're just too so famous and better look better than average looking, maybe at that point you actually like the person. Second dance. No, it it won't money. be the last dance. It's the second dance because they'll get married again and they have their first dance again. There you go. <laughs> All these I, titles I, you have. I, I think the 30 for 30, you know, getting her back, the Tom Brady Giselle story <laughs> sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> Did I um playing it with anybody? <laughs> what was your favorite play you saw this year? Definitely the uh, failed lateral. You, I think, Alex, for all the shit you got and you saw your team, you do have that <laughs> one play. Of Chandler Jones just throwing Mac Jones's career down oh, the tube. Oh yeah, yeah. Like no, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably that actually that. might be my favorite play of the year. Now. My favorite that play was the up. Justin Jefferson catch. Oh my god, that catch. That yeah. one was sick. Yeah, that, that has sick. to be my favorite. Yeah. Ridiculous that catch. The, the Chandler Jones was the best. Like, come on, man, from ESPN. Hmm. But I would say like the best, like sensational, like play of the year. Actually, I'm gonna go back to week two, George Pickens on a Thursday night. Oh, yeah, that George Pickens catch was, was that really was a awesome. nice. That was pretty awesome too. That's, that was ridiculous. Which player? Which team or player was a huge disappointment this year? Josh McDaniels. Huge Russell Wilson. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah I'll say it has to be, has to be Russell, Russell Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. Uh, yep. What do we get out of him becoming a just a – he started this year – with legitimate momentum, people feel that the Broncos would be a rec- a force to be reckoned with, and he literally made himself more of a joke as a player in his legacy. Broncos Can he get that stop. back? <laughs> Can he get that back with Sean Payton uh, leading him on? I, I think so, but uh, I just think because we're seeing that Sean Payton's a no-nonsense coach, and And oh, so we lost Alex this year. Um, the LA Chargers, the fact they couldn't win a playoff game with Justin Herbert, yes, yeah. kind of a joke. Yeah, that's what I was, was going to say, actually. I was think, um, despite making the playoffs, I feel like the Chargers should have had a much better season. Yeah, you have like six. Justin Herbert, who's like one of the elite, most elite quarterbacks in the league, and that's the best you could do. Kind of a yeah, joke. Chargers are a major disappointment, but that's but that's also on brand for the Chargers. I was calling for Brandon Staley's job last year when he totally dropped the ball in the last week. So, loser, loser, loser. And um, how about just the Rams becoming a big joke themselves? Sean McVay staying, well, even they, with the new they, staff. They, uh, they put in all that money. For yeah. To get the Super Bowl, they got the Super Bowl. Yeah. They got the Super Bowl. I think I think I think we kind of all saw the writing on the wall that it was either going to be really good or backfire, and it was really good. They got the Super Bowl, but now it's backfiring because they went all in, and this is the cost of going all in in today's NFL. There you go. It's almost like it's almost almost like gone like going out all night partying, like just taking like Coke and Adderall and like drinking all night. It's like you have the come down the next day, and you have nothing in the tank. It's like guys, I'm just I'm done. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Yeah, so it's just like it was. It yes, almost we all like agreed to this. That, that Super Bowl roster was meant. It had an expiration date. Mm-hmm. Very early. Yeah. like it was built on a. It was built on sand from the beginning. But yeah, okay. even in the same in the same breath, though, I still think that there's tremendous blue chip assets that they can actually deal and divvy. That if they wanted to work their way back up, they could still reclaim that yeah. West. It, lo- it looks like they're going to start that process by trading Jalen Ramsey and get. Oh some yeah, it's back. So we'll we'll maybe see them back to prominence by getting much needed assets back. Yeah, and you think it was worth it for the Rams to do? I think clearly of yes, course. because of yeah, how far You got a super oh, ring is a ring. I agree. Yeah. I agree. That was worth it. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And the rings um, are rings. last forever. I wanted that was the uh, first uh, front Super Bowl for the LA franchise, correct? For the the LA Rams, not the uh, for the LA, LA Rams. Rams, not the yes. St. Louis. St. Louis won in '99 when they beat Tennessee, but that was for LA. Wasn't that their first title? That Sean. is yes. That was LA. That was the LA Rams' first title, correct? Yeah. 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 I'm pretty and sure. I'll look right did we like the new some of the new broadcasting teams? Did we like the new Fox team? I thought they were awesome. Or oh. the board? And we know you don't like them. <laughs> I want Kevin Harlan with a solo stage on every program. <laughs> <laughs> I I do too. I love He's Lisa great. Harlan, but we can't have him on every broadcast. <laughs> Never. The, like I said, the best the best thing he ever said, I can't repeat because it will offend some people. But... I think I think Romo Romo really regressed this year though. Am I wrong? Yeah, a lot he of people are saying this year. that, but I actually Yeah, like a lot. Him. You, you know, it happens when you're discontinued from playing and you don't know the play calls and stuff like that or the type of scheme that's going on in the league. It's very common for that to happen and he's gonna have to really you know, hit the books and study. It. He got lazy. Yeah, he did get. Supposedly, CBS had to have a have a meeting An with him allegedly about uh, about I guess the commentary he was giving because before he was giving a lot of insight and like breakdown, and then this year for some reason he was just like all hopped up on quarterbacks and being enamored by quarterbacks this year. So I don't know why it was such a drastic change between like being be. an actual good like color commentator and analyst to just being like Patrick Mahomes is amazing. Look at this throw. Like he was just like, where where is the insight there? We all we all know this, Tony. If we need a if we need a most improved commentator for the year, shout out to Greg Olson. Yeah, yeah. that's why he can't go anywhere. Yeah, Greg Olson. Iron Eagle. Iron Eagle's my guy. Just give him every award. <laughs> yeah, he'll probably Jim Nance has probably gone after his contract. He should just go up, be the next he one. Should. I would I would love more Iron Eagle. I think he's fantastic. Eagle yeah. and Romo. Huh. Why not? All right. well, I mean, yeah, I, I, if I was Jim Nance, I would just pivot into just doing March Madness because he killed it. Like I remember he did the, he did the, uh, 
He did the uh, North Carolina Villanova game when they had the game winner, and he killed it in that game. He's amazing in college basketball. He is, he is. Always yeah, has really and golf. He always, he always has been here. And golf, yep, in golf. Yeah, and golf. Let me All jump right. in some golf. Definitely. Well, guys, I think we can put a wrap on the 2022 NFL season. The combine starts this week, which starts our pursuit for the 2023 season. And yeah, let's start that road to Super Bowl 58 right now in Las Vegas, Nevada. And hopefully at least one of our teams is there. So it'll be a lot of fun. But uh, yeah. exactly. that's it. We have Alex Young, Alex Renelia, Brian McKeon, and Hayden Nadler. We will be checking in sporadically throughout the off season, and uh, we could do some other shows throughout as well. And then, uh, before you know it, we will be previewing officially the twenty twenty three season. Let's get it. Sounds All good. right. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you, you for guys. a great opportunity. Thank hey, you. Let's keep it going. Congratulations, guys, and we will see you Cheers. really soon.